yo guys it's Vin. This is actually my second time trying to record this video just because the audio in the video got desynced somehow. I don't have a screen recording device for my computer, it's, I'm just using the built in. So it's kind of hard for me to record these videos but I'm going to try anyway. Today I'm going to be analyzing Swada versus baby boy Daniel. Um, I saw this match, I thought it was kind of hilarious and I thought that even though Swada is playing very bad and it's not like the best pro gameplay ever, I think that that's exactly why there are a lot of things to learn from this. Um, I don't know what was up with Swada, if there was nerves or lack of sleep or things like that. I'm pretty sure it was lack of sleep is what he said, but he was making a lot of simple mistakes that people in lower elos make, like dodging in, dodging down, rushing attacks, landing landing with attacks, um, things like that. So anyway, let's just get into it. I usually don't like to record pro analyses just because I myself am not a pro and I miss a lot of the fine details, um, but... I think that some of the mistakes here are very obvious, so yeah, let's just dissect it. Daniel, um, he, I'm going to call him Daniel, not baby boy Daniel, because it's kind of awkward, but uh, he interrupts Swada Silight with another sidelight, and the thing is here is Swada instantly dodges. Um, a lot of times, higher level players will delay their dodges slightly as a defensive mechanism to try and confuse their opponent in a way they're reacting to their opponent reacting to them reacting to your opponent what kind of option they're going to throw out and doing a dodge that will be more optimal but swada instantly dodges in which i thought was interesting you're going to see that a lot and it's actually one of the reasons why he ends up losing these games and throwing a big lead here we go uh we kind of see swada is landing a lot with attacks he's doing jump, jump, dare. Uh, he immediately dodged there after the Sare too, so that's just another thing to note. Um, Daniel's going to pick up on that now that this is the second time that he's dodged in. That's not me, I'm, I'm recording on Mac. That, that was the recorder's uh, windows. Anyway, so here we see Swada do a very good dare, but the thing is that there's so much time to react. He literally does a dash jump, right, before the GC, right, dash jump and then GC, um, and then he throws out a side light. So if you can see my mouse, Daniel's already up here. There's no reason for him to go for a GC side light. Even if Daniel were actually on the ground, look at how much space he has behind him. If he wanted to, I bet Daniel could probably react and run away off the stage this way to avoid the side light and reset. Um, but instead, Swada throws out a very ambitious GC side light, and Daniel just punishes. But the thing is, is he actually reverses the dare, and reversing the dare on stage is very dangerous because it doesn't have a lot of stun, and Swada can actually get a confirmed wake up and lay out of it. So that's pretty interesting. That's something to note for later, and that uh, Daniel will actually take advantage of it in the second game. He doesn't dodge there, but he gets a nice recovery. Um, he actually jumps into the recovery as well as he jumps into that side zig there. I'm not going to talk about that that much. Um, but Daniel's just putting a lot of pressure on the edge here, delighting and side taking. Swada gets around it, and but the thing is to note is that Swada is always landing towards the corner, and you're going to see this play a big part in the later ends of the match. Because, I mean, it's not really smart to run towards the middle of the stage, right? You don't have that many options to burn to travel all the way there, so you're going to want to return to the corner, but you're going to see in the second game especially, Swada starts returning to the corner in very, very rushed manners. So we'll get to that when we get to that. I don't have much to say there. He just caught the landing, or, um, and then with the with the desig. I think attacking an opponent like that is kind of risky when they're in invincibility frames. But anyway, Daniel just kind of walks up to him and does a D light dare here, which I think is interesting that Swada didn't react to this. But either way, he pushes him away, and Daniel expects that he's going to be still grabbing weapons, so he tries to GC delight, but Swada has enough time to react, to drift away and Sare. That jump Sare into the wall like this, this is not even a bad option. I think this is a very good option by Swada. Um, but you see right here, he dodges down, and keep note that every time Daniel does a side light, um, in risky situation, in, in like towards the end of this match, he's going to dodge down. He actually dodges up there though, which is pretty interesting. I think Daniel is catching on to the fact that he's alternating dodges, but either way, he's not really taking note of them very well, Swada, just because he's dodging in and down a lot. Um, but you're going to see some interesting movement tech here. This is a cool tech where he's trying, he's instead of dodging with the dodge, he's dodging with his movement. So he does a dash jump and he dodges down to the ground, so he's immediately on the ground to get a grounded punish. 
he sees that Daniel's he reacts that he's over here and he's going to punish him, so he moves away. Daniel tries to go and punish him, but now he sees that SWAT is on the ground and he, and he is in the bad position, Daniel. So he backs off like a smart player. Now he's going to try and reset and do the same thing. SWAT dash jumps and Daniel tries to delight where he was and now SWAT dodges down to the ground and gets a punish. I think delight would have been better there, but it's okay. This is something I don't agree with. I don't know why he chose to dash off the stage with a delight here. I think that Sword has a lot of potential to just delight and light on the stage. Maybe he knows something more than I do. Again, he has a level 100 Bodvar, but um, I just don't know why he chose to willingly dash delight off the edge because now baby boy Daniel has the stage control and it's only by luck that Swata throws his weapon and is able to escape that. You're going to see something more um, some more pressure exerted on the edge in the second game without sliding off the stage with a jet dash delight. I think that this edge guard was pretty rushed. Most good players will return to the wall before they return to the corner, but the thing is is that it was just a one second too late. So this is honestly not a bad option. I can see why he wanted to go for this, but SWAT is able um, Daniel's able to slip through and return to the corner. So maybe unfortunate, maybe not. I think that this ground pound was very ambitious, um, but it's okay. That was only one of that was like one of the only times that Daniel lands with an attack that's really bad. Whereas Swada lands with attacks the entire time. If you're trying to land with attacks, it's very risky because you lock yourself in even more active frames than you need to. Catching landings is already a fundamental skill that pros have mastered, um, but you make it so easy for them when you land with an attack because it's so easy to dodge that. He does a delight here. Daniel thinks that it's safe to go in, and he actually saves his dodge because a lot of hammer players will actually like delight and then end light, end light to catch this dodge here. But instead, Swada dashes away to match the distance, which is very, very smart. Daniel realizes, oh no, I'm going to get scared, so he starts to drift back, but it doesn't matter because Swada has his dodge, and he dodges back and then sares, which is very, very good. Let me know if I should do more of these videos, because I actually like recording them. I just don't have a screen recording device, so it's very difficult. I hope the audio doesn't sync desync again. By the way, that's not my mouse. If you saw that mouse on the screen, that's that's the recorder's mouse. This is the editor's choice. This wasn't on stream, so that's why you hear Windows noises. Good Nair. I think that this Nair right here is very ambitious. There's definitely able to react that Daniel... Um, is is not there and he just jumps into the side sag you're going to see a lot of times especially in the second game he's going swada goes for like dash jump stairs and just jump fast while nares when daniel is just literally not in the air which is interesting same thing with actually no no that didn't happen yet i forgot because the second time i'm trying to record this so we'll look in a second i'll show you another example of swada doing something where daniel just isn't there another dodge in interesting so he lands with an attack here he does dodge, so what does he have? One jump, last jump, and then he falls in stairs, which is actually pretty lucky that Daniel just kind of ran into it. Maybe he predicted it, but overall that's not something to rely on. It's actually the reason why he loses the second game. That dash and ground pound was rushed. Good thing that Daniel didn't try to like counter ground pound him though. Um, you see, every time Swat is in the air, he just dodges down, which I think is interesting. You're going, it's literally going to be the reason why he loses this game in a second. That dare into ground pound honestly wasn't a bad idea, just because of the fact that, like, you know, a lot of people would normally d jump into that, but Daniel's pretty smart. He goes outwards, um, and he sees that he only has a dodge left, so even if he misses ground pound, he can just jump Nair, which is actually very smart. But again, another falling attack. This is a double whammy right here. He uses his jumps, falls with an attack, and then immediately dodges in. Ugh. It's okay. Another dodge in. So here, he's using his dodge as a type of jump. You can immediately fast fall a dodge up. So he does a dodge up like that. And he does another jump to think that Daniel's going to be over here. And I feel like he's... He doesn't... He's not taking into account that Daniel literally has a dodge. So if Daniel doesn't have a dodge, falling with an attack is a little bit better. But even if he does all the spacing right, he's... Daniel will still be able to react and dodge out of it, right? This is sick, though. That was awesome. Cool Russian Mafia.
good side light. So interesting that um, he read that. Let me see. Daniel did that. Yeah, he just kind of walked up and tried to hit him. I thought that was kind of ambitious, but it's okay. Here is the example that I was talking about. He does a side light, which is honestly not a bad side light, but Daniel is able to react and go upwards. This is very hopeful, imagining that Daniel is just going to fall on top of him and he's going to end light. Yeah, that's very ambitious right there. Um, if I were him, if I missed that side light, I would have like jumped dodge or jumped out of it and reacted because at this high of a level, you know, baby boy Daniel, he is no slouch, right? He may not be a household name, but he's not gonna, just going to run into your punish and immediately try to punish you, right? He's doing good by punishing the second move, not the first move. Again, falling down with attack when Daniel has a dodge. Interesting. Daniel can just react and get a quick end light. Good, baits out the dodge, gets the side light into a uh, D-Light Sare. And here is where things go bad. Simple dodge down read. Not much else to say there. Let's just move on to the second game. Okay, guys, here we are in the second game, and you're going to be seeing a lot of the same themes. That Swada plays a little bit better in, in certain spurts of the match, but there's still a lot of dodging in, and you're going to see that's exactly why he loses. <laughs> so especially with landing with attacks. Good, better neutral being played here. They're kind of dancing around each other. Um, okay. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I'm sure you know why this is bad, but in, if it were me, you, he does a delight, then he does a side light here, which is honestly not awful, right? I would have... You can either end light right here to get an optimal punish, um, or like a... I don't think he could have gotten a delay. I don't think there's enough time, but he could have ventilated here. But if realistically, right, you can't always be optimal. I would have just disengaged. Um, instead of mashing buttons when you're keep missing, I would have rather just disengaged and reset to neutral because it's, it's better for your mental. I think when you keep mashing buttons and you keep missing and then you eventually get punished, that's just frustrating. Um, especially with how SWAT has already been playing. I, I don't think that this is smart. He did a delay into a side light. Into a slide light, into a D light, which is I thought it was interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's just move on. Again, falling with attacks, and then he dodges in. Interesting. Ambitious side sig, but it's okay. Here, Swada lands with an attack again. He misses his dare and tries to cover himself with a sig because he thinks that. Daniel's still going to be here. Again, this is very hopeful that that he thinks that Daniel's still going to be here. He's a smart player. He's going to move away, and he gets an optimal punch for the side sig. Because Sarah has a lot of active frames, so right? He, can, he has enough time to get that off. Interesting. That was a very, very good dash from fastfall. GC uh, delight recovery. Very cool. A little unfortunate that he is not able to get the weapon starve. Let's see what happens here. So yeah, this is exactly why I think that pressure is better without dash delighting off the stage, especially when the wall is super small like this. He can just hold the position here. Again, same thing, holding the position. That's interesting. That was honestly a good Sare, that jump read. But Daniel's able to react because he has a dodge and he just jumps dodge through it. Very good delay recovery, though. Again, I don't really have much to say so far. Um, not bad. Not, like, the worst. It's definitely not as bad as last match so far, so yeah. Oh, but here. This GC side light was much better. So remember how he did a GC side light on this end of the stage last match, and Daniel's up here? First of all, if he were down here, he could have definitely ran away, right? But here, he starts the GC side light from very close to the edge of the stage, Meaning that Daniel, if he doesn't dodge, he's it's very hard for him to avoid it because he would either have to jump or go off stage. It's just not enough to react and he catches this. I think that that ground pound was a little ambitious, but it's okay. He just dodges through it. So again, better neutrals being played here. Nice Sarah into side light. He gets a nice jump read there. He has no options, so I probably would have gone for something there, but it's okay. He may have realized that he had a dodge and he just backed off because of it. Here he gets a side sig and he reads the wake up stare, which is very good. 
uh, because a lot of Gauntlet's Lance and Cannon players will wake up Sarah to get back to the map quicker, and he just throws the weapon. That's a little unlucky that the side they caught like that. Um, but again, not much else to say so far. This is way better. This is the kind of swatter that won BCX, right? He does. He kind of dances opponent around his opponent with a dash jump, dash jump, and then dashes in with a delay stare instead of landing with attacks and dodging and things like that. Here he realizes that he probably could have gotten an edge guard off when Daniel was in recovery frames after he did the recovery here. But, I mean, he has a dodge, right? And he's, he realizes that, so he just backs off, right? There's no reason for him to push an edge guard when he's in yellow, right? Um, where Scythe thrives. You know, string weapons thrive when you're in yellow health and white health because you get more damage off. Um, so it's good that he realized that he had unarmed. He's definitely outmatched in this offstage game, so he just backed off. I didn't say much about that stock so far, but you're going to see when he gets this delight recovery or this recovery string, things can go pretty bad very quickly. So right here, he does a nair into a recovery. That's good, right? That's all fine. He gets hit with a stare. Good option from Daniel. But why does he dodge in? Up and in, perfect into the... Oh my god. He dodges perfectly into that. All he has left is two jumps because he already used his recovery. He fast falls thinking that Daniel is going to immediately go for it, but he actually delays the ground pound, which is pretty smart. Maybe Swad was overreading him, but either way, he just kind of falls to his death, which is unfortunate. And here, I think Swad is some, succumbing to, a little bit to panic. Um, you're going to see him dodging in way more. His neutral is going to be way worse. And you're going to see him land with a lot more attacks right here. I don't think that there was a reason to dash jump and then, like, Sare like that. Again, another falling Sare, and then he dodges in. Three mistakes in, like, one second, literally. Uh, again, here, we're going to see him dodge into the corner, um, fall to the corner very, very bad, like I mentioned in the first game. I said what happened now. He dodges in, and then he tries to cover himself with a Sare. Daniel has way more space than him, right? Swat only has this amount of space. Daniel has the entire stage, so he outmaneuvers him, moves back is enough time to set up a delight because this move is very long, right? Daniel is just maintaining stage control right now very well, and he's just reveling in it, right? He immediately, again, Swada is instantly dodging in. He's not delaying the dodge. He's not reacting to anything. He's doing everything on instinct, on re like immediately. And because of it, Daniel is able to realize that he dodges. He can only return to the corner now, right? And he just attacks the corner. He could have ended it right there if he got that Sarah, honestly, but... I don't know why. Let me know if you, what you guys think, but I don't know why Swada went for a teardrop weapon throw like this and then dash jump Sarah. If you're going to throw a weapon like this, I would have rather attacked here, but, you know, this is just me, right? Because to avoid this weapon, you have to go downwards. So I would have attacked here, but maybe you guys know something more than me. Maybe it's because the weapon didn't go far and he expected Daniel to jump. But overall, Swada is over reading his opponent, I feel like. I feel like he's reading jumps where they just don't happen. He only got a single jump Sarah read like once this entire game. This entire set, actually. Again, right here. He's trying to read jumps with a dash jump Sarah, but Daniel's just not panicking. Look at how good his movement did. Look how good Daniel's movement is. He's just, he's just calm. He's just walking. What a god. Look at that. Okay, this is where things go very bad. Again, landing with attacks. He uses his jumps, falls with a sair, gets a punish. Okay. Little, little interesting that that worked. Okay, this is where things get very bad, though. He nares. Okay, well, let's rewind the five seconds. He he nares up here. And then he falls down with a stare to cover himself. Because, again, he thinks that, oh, Daniel has no option, so he's going to land here. But in reality, that's just so hopeful. Daniel just outspaces him because he has more stage behind him, right? He has the space to move this way. He outmaneuvers Swada's stare and punishes with a delight. And this is where things go bad. He immediately uses recovery, which is fine, I guess. But Daniel throws his weapon, right? 
Um, if you're going to immediately use your recovery, you have to be prepared to jump Nair on the edge, especially because the wall is so small. So it's very easy to edge guard this. Daniel baits out the dodge, very smart. And now this should have been a jump Nair. It should have been a jump Nair right here. If you use your recovery first, you have to be prepared to cover yourself some other way. Daniel gets a GC sidelight, and that's the set. So, what did we learn from this video? Nerves play a big part. I don't know exactly what was going on with Swata. Um, maybe it's because he's just he knows the menace baby boy Daniel, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting how these mistakes that are made in gold and platinum are replicated at such a high level of play just because of mental. Um, I think it's pretty interesting. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys learned something and enjoyed it. I hope you did. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.